after a compact start to the season with five races in the space of seven weeks today we return to the world monopasto sim racing championship for our first race in four weeks how will the gap have affected our teams and drivers as they take stock of their season so far will it result in a karma race this afternoon compared to the five we've seen so far hopefully not today wmsc 2024 visits manny core for the first time and joining me once again to cover all the action is Robin Tubin. Robin, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ed. Thanks for the uh, introduction. Um, yeah, really looking forward to this one. Haven't seen a race in, in quite some while here uh, at Magnico, so yeah, very excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, this should be very interesting this afternoon, a new experience for all of our drivers. Uh, this the penultimate race before the summer break of our 14 race calendar. And uh, let's see after the five races so far what the standings look like. Well, Yanis Volborn, uh, his it was his first pointless finish in nine races last time out uh, in Montreal, and his first ever DNF. As a result, Lucas Murno and teammate Pascal Polans pulled within ten points of the reigning champion. Philip Pushka in fourth, tied with Daniel Benton Reader. He keeps his sixth place despite a penalty. More on that in a minute. While Ruben Meshter missed last time out, but he's back today and looking quick and hoping to get himself back in the picture. Also returning, Alexander Knezovic down in eighth. In the team standings, well, Holland Racing team still scoring well. Uh, Pascal Poland's still getting on the podium in third place last time out, but good points for Scuderia Cesario, second and fourth and they're bringing big upgrades again today another team bringing big upgrades further down the field is infernal void racing looking to get their season started but last time out with costex scoring for the first time philip feckler finally getting some points it means now everyone is on the board and there could be an interesting fight for sixth place brewing now we look at the weather and manny core when it was in formula one always had this reputation for maybe throwing out some interesting races if the rain came and there is a threat of that this afternoon the forecast only says cloudy but there is a slight chance of rain in both sessions as ever this forecast issued before the race so all the drivers see it based on the statistical data of the location in the respective month and prepared by neutral persons so it should be representative of what's going on and there could be rain this afternoon now, qualifying is just about to start, so hopefully we'll be able to head over to the track and we can see cars beginning to queue up by pit exit, get underway in Manny Core. Waiting for the green light there. And off we go. It should be an interesting one this afternoon, uh, Robin. Um, okay, not raced here before. Been a while since we've seen some open wheel action on Manny Core. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the teams do here. Yeah, it's always very hard to judge, but I think this qualifying session will be a mighty important one because, uh, if you remember the last open wheel races we see, we've seen here, overtaking is not all that easy. Uh, uh, on this circuit. Um, there are two DRS zones, um, so we haven't ever seen an open wheel race here with the uh, drag reduction system, so maybe that will improve the overtaking situation, but I really think that uh, this session here is quite vital for a good result. Um, and Yanis Wilborn also the first one to head out, so he's trying to get a clean run right at the start of the session to set a bank lap. And it's also worth noting that uh, Janis Volborn is alone this afternoon. Teammate Pascal Poland's uh, missing out. Uh, as I said before, Janis Volborn, his run of nine point scoring finishes coming to an end with the DNF last time out. His teammate had uh, ten, and that is going to come to an end by default today. Uh, but hopefully still looking to pick up some points and maybe recover his uh, title fight this afternoon. But he's going to be very Turning. And Lucas Murno, who scored uh, three second place finishes in the last four races, Scuderia Cesario have brought a big upgrade package this weekend, also buoyed by the return of Alexander Knezovic. So they could be strong here today. 
yeah, Cesaria have been improving uh, throughout the season. They may have been even the biggest surprise of the season so far. Lucas Murnau, he's he's right in the title fight so far, just eight points behind Yanis Wilborn. So, if things go horribly wrong for Yanis and uh, Lucas finally uh, wins his first race here, he might even take the championship lead. I mean, that's a bit of a far fetched situation, but still, um, he is within one race of taking the championship lead. And it's not impossible. We don't know what could happen this afternoon. Um, and we're really interested to see how well the car handles for Yanis Wolborn this afternoon. Because as we've uh, heard in a lot of the post-race interviews when, you know, Pascal and Yanis are typically both there, um, Pascal does a lot of setup work. Uh, and, the, and it seems like the brunt of the set at work. So with Pascal not being here this week, we don't know if he still worked on the car uh, with Yanis beforehand. Yanis might be very good at setting up the car in his own right, but it'll be interesting to see if that affects him this afternoon. Yeah, and Holland Racing Team are generally such a well, well-oiled machine uh, since... Oh, 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 Philip Puschke, that's a big crash. I think he's lost a tyre there. A the remarkable thing about the timing line being just out of the exit is that still was good enough to get him to a provisional front row. Um, but we've seen a couple of people in practice getting a little bit wide and over that final chicane curb. Uh, that could be a race ender this afternoon. Yeah, exactly. We've seen him jump uh, over that curb there. I'm uh, not entirely sure now if there is like a certain amount of time that this needs to get fixed. He is in the pits and it's taking quite some time now. He's not instantly out again. Would make sense, otherwise uh, you'd just see them literally throwing it across that curb every lap, so I think you ideally still want to keep it out the wall. Um, we'll see if he, he gets back out how much that's punished him, but it's provisional front row for now, only two tenths away from Yanis Wolborn, but here comes Ruben Mesheda, solid lap, and he heads up to the front row of the grid. Okay, and I've just received news. Pushk is out of the session. So if you escape on track and not return to the pit lane in the intended manner, you're out of the session. So no further improvements from Philip Pushka. And I don't think that was quite a good enough lap time because they will certainly improve. We've seen much better times already in the practice sessions ahead of this qualifying. Very true, they were heading down to uh, the low 1 minute 13s, high 1 minute 12s, and you know, with it being overcast, the cars running out on the track will very much affect uh, you know, the track evolution, so we're expecting things to get quicker. Um, so it's a shame, because Pushka obviously clearly had the pace and could have improved with them, but obviously that, that mistake over the final corner, uh, he is out of the session. Yeah, and he's been on such a, 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 a an upward momentum lately. He uh, achieved pole position in Monaco, finished on the podium there, and he won the last race in Canada. So, yeah, that's a damp in his spirits because he's he's been driving very very well lately. Still, plenty of time. Um for others to improve and knocking down the order. He will be hoping that that is not the case. Um, now, interesting, we've seen that uh, one of the other top performers of the season, Daniel Benton Reader, uh, is not out on track yet to set a time. Um, and that is because it doesn't matter what time he sets as a result of a penalty from the last race. So you may remember we had quite a dramatic uh, final lap safety car restart. Um, and that was caused by a previous... Uh, safety car restart um, that unfortunately uh, Daniel Benton reader was a judge to have uh, caused the accident um, the results stood so there were no post race changes to the finishing order uh, but he has been handed a back of grid penalty for today so regardless of what happens he will be starting uh, on the back row of the grid yeah so he'll be kicking himself um, especially since last race, he, he was in a prime position to win this one, as he was the first car on dry tyres on a, a quickly drying track, with all of the cars ahead of him uh, were still on intermediates. There was a chance for him to win his first race then, and well, he did not win it, as we all saw, <laughs> and uh, yeah, took a, quite a lot of cars out in the process. 
It has otherwise been a very good season for Daniel Benson Reader, scoring points in every round of the championship, qualified second uh, as well. Oh, time! A big moment there. I mean, well held by Alexander Knezovic, purple final sector, and he's now just two tenths away from Yanis Volbon, who set a good early marker that no one's been able to bet yet, so uh, maybe nothing to worry about in terms of setup and how things are going this afternoon. Peckley uh, into 12 for Potenza, finishing. Oh, there's a goal oh. without a rear wing. Coming out of the pit as well, which is interesting. It's Victor B. How has he managed to come out of the pits without a wing? I'm not sure if he actually came out of the pit lane or just went down uh, to the pit exit to dive out of the way of oncoming cars. Oh, and he's got to be careful because as we've already discovered, if he doesn't make it back to the pits under his own steam... Uh, that will be him out of the session as well, currently in 8th. Yeah, Victor, Victor was also one of the cars that uh, was taken out in that Benton Reed incident while running well in the points once again. And of course it's the final chicane. Ooh. Tried to keep his foot in it and almost got away with it, uh, but didn't quite. Yeah, Infernal Void have had a uh, quite rotten run of luck. A lot of their cars getting caught up in incidents where it's not really their fault. Last time out, very much more of the same. But so far, both cars uh, doing well, just on the edge of the points paying positions at the minute in 7th and 8th. They've brought big upgrades as well this week. Uh, the other big team to, uh, to make some uh, big improvements to the car. We go on board now with Max Heyman, and this is uh, an interesting one for Max Heyman. The team boss of Scuderia Cesario scored his best ever finish driving for his own team last time. He's also driven for Kostek this season as a stand-in. Um, as you can see, he's currently driving neither of those cars. He's in better Gili today uh, as a sub for Denny Vela, so this is his third different team of the season, but he's going to be looking for his second consecutive points finish. Yeah, he was very, very close to a, a podium finish even in that last race. He was unhappy about the move that Pascal Paulins pulled on him in, in the uh, final lap in the hairpin. Wow, big moment there for one of the, I uh, think that was once again an Infernal Boy, Cativo. I'm styling it out and starting his flying lap. Just under 10 minutes of the 15 minute session gone. Uh, people trying to get their uh, get their big flyers in. There is, as ever, a lot of sandbagging. Um, I looked at the uh, server times in practice, the, the hot lap times, and the fastest lap was a, a 1 minute 14.9, set by Ruben Meshida. Looking an hour later, <laughs> all the times had miraculously dropped by 1 to 2 seconds, so I don't think we've seen the fastest of uh, the top guys just yet. Yeah, I reckon we didn't, but there is not much time left in this session. Just four and a half minutes, so they should all be preparing their final runs by now. Gonzalez Cativo, there might be a bit of an improvement there. Gaining on Wilborn's time in the middle sector. No, sorry, uh, improving on his own time in the middle sector. The final chicane gets over that curb this time. Not launching, uh, but no improvement on position. Remaining seventh for now. Nezovic returning uh, after a couple of races off. And a good start so far. Only a tenth down after the first sector. We head towards Imola. The name of the corner. He's not just changed circuits, just FYI. And uh, through the DRS detection zone of that second DRS window. Uh, and then through the activation line you can just see there. I think he's bailed out of that one. Plus 1.8 in the middle sector. But giving yeah. Gaggiano a bit of a toll there. Gets out the way, so not impeding. Gaggiano slides it across the line. And it's up to third for Gino Gaggiano, the SCMM boss. The great lap there. Oh, and Peckley getting a little bit sideways into the penultimate corner. And unfortunately, that ruins an improved lap. 
And Victor B back out, obviously managed to get back without any issues after losing his rear wing. Looking at an improvement on his personal best, into the final chicane, turns 16 and 17. And that's not an improved time though, unfortunately for him. Remaining eight at the minute. The slowest person to have set a time so far is Henry Buckland, who is the team boss of Magnum Motorsports. He's once again the only person running this afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, João Fernando Labau missing with illness. And it looks like there's rain. It looks like rain is falling towards the end of the session. And I think this is going to make it very difficult for anyone to improve. Yeah, it is indeed. It's Murno just proving us wrong there. Second now on the grid. I was just about to say, unusual for Murno to be behind his teammate on pure pace. But this is the front row that we enjoy. The first two in the championship, provisionally sharing the front row of the grid. Good to see Reuven Meshida back up and improving. Victor B not able to improve. But Lucas Murner has gone purple in the first sector. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep that up through the lap, but the first sector effectively mostly being that back straight. But we'll see what he can do. They're only saying 5% rain on the uh, on the radar, but it looks like it's it's quite substantial, but hopefully the track is still dry enough. It's a personal improvement. But down by uh, two tenths overall. Charges towards turn 15. Lycee Pin. Lycee Pan? Lycee uh, Pan, I think. Lycee Pan. I, did, I don't know what grade I got. Oh, French! No! Oh, dear. And that is the end of Lucas Murnau's session. No improvement from him. Damn. That's the second time we've seen a car fly off camera just to see parts pop up into the air in the foreground. The Scuderia Cesario seems to be very quick in the first sector. Also purple lap time there by Alexander Knazovic. <clears throat> here comes Benton Reader coming out just to get his eye in. As we say, he's going to be starting at the back no matter what, but it'll be good to see what his pace is regardless. I think this is through 180 we're following through now. So this is coming to like the end of the second sector, just ahead of Imola. Lovely flowing left-right combination up to the braking zone, turn 14, Chateau Deux. Checkered flag is out. Not much improvements as you can see, but this is, is looking good for Daniel Benton Reed, as we say, it won't affect his... Uh, his position oh, when he <laughs> decides to bail out of that. I don't oh. think there will be any more improvements. They've all been already down by a long way. Everyone in the pits, Knez is still out there. I think a lot of them just looking, coming around and pulling in by this point. Yeah, Knezovic comfortably down. I think that has decided our grid for the race. For the first time since Bahrain, it's Yanis Volborn on pole position. Lucas Murno, though, continuing his fine form this season. Second on the grid. Ruben Meshter returns to action in third, so it's just what you want to see. The three of the main protagonists up the front. A great lap from Gino Gajano gets in fourth, whereas Knezovic returns, showing the pace of that Scuderia Cesario. Uh, oh, Pondry a little bit of a, a visual glitch on the screen there. Um, in the meantime, Philip Pushka is sixth. Wow, that was really difficult for me to just add one to a number, wasn't it? Philip Pushka is sixth. Uh, then it's the two Infernal Voids in seventh and eighth, followed by Max Heyman making his substitute debut. Better Julia, Mark Jordan rounding out the top 10 in the Bella Cheetah. Then it's Line of Stern, two Potenzas, two Cos Tax, Henry Buckland uh, for Magnum Motorsports, and Daniel Benton Reader last and serving his penalty as expected.
I think we've had someone leave the server because there were 16 drivers. So I think that's why there's been a, a slight glitch on there. But we should have all 16 drivers back for the race itself um, in about five to ten minutes. So join us for Lights Out at Manny Core.
Welcome back to Manicore. We are just catching the end of warm-up. At the minute, the track is dry, but we saw rain at the end of qualifying. Uh, mix things up a little bit and change some plans, meaning a lot of people had to abort their all-important final runs. We're expecting rain again in some form in the race, but we're not sure uh, when and in what capacity. There's a lot of people out on track right now trying out intermediate tyres as well. So... And we'll see how it goes. As you can see, quite a few cars just pouring out the last few uh, moments of the warm-up. Let's just have a reminder of that starting grid once again. Yanis Volborn is on pole position ahead of Lucas Murno, Reuven Mescheder in third. It's going to be a very interesting run down to the Adelaide hairpin. Gina Gajano, an excellent result in fourth. Knezovic and Pushka on row three, while it's an all infernal void, row four. Row five, Max Heyman subbing in for better Julia alongside Mark Jordan, the only Vela Cheetah racing today, or both pretends as line of stern on row six. Kostek follows suit for row seven, Henry Buckland uh, racing for his team, and this time we're expecting him to go as far as he can in the race this afternoon, alongside Daniel Bentonreader, who is serving his back of grid penalty. So Robin, I'm going to put you on the spot once again. Um, prediction for the race winner this afternoon. I'm going to say Lucas Murnau this time. I say he finally does it. He came so close. Three times, that is, now this season. So one day has to be the one, and I say today is that day. I think he's got a very good chance, and uh, I, I don't blame you. Um, between Yanis and Reuven of the other two, I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, obviously, Meshida having missed out and, and returning today. Um, I'm actually going to back Reuven for the win this afternoon. I think he might have a good chance. But that being said, Yanis Volborn will be determined to recover after missing out on points last time in Montreal. Should be very interesting indeed.
So probably with our with our guesses, we've now confirmed Yanis Wilborn as the winner today. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see how this plays out anyway, as the cars are about to line up on the grid. We'll keep an eye uh, eye on obviously the weather and what people are going for in terms of tires. Um, it is the rule uh, that they have to use both sets of tyres. Everyone has gone for the medium super soft set once again. But if it's a wet race, that rule does similarly go out the window. So some might be looking for that rule to go out the window by starting on a wet tyre. But everyone's still popping in, so we're waiting for that information uh, to come up. Like everyone is on the grid, the revs come up. The lights go on, and off we go in Manny Core. And there's a couple of sluggish starters. Benton Reader immediately looking, trying to get the move, but it's the run through. Turn one through Estoril now. The big sweeping left hander. A couple of people on the grass trying to keep it in out of everyone else as they head onto the gravel, but it's down the back straight. Volborn has held the lead. Ruben meshes up to second. Myrna with a terrible start. He's swapped places with his teammate, effectively. And that run down to the Adelaide hairpin is not in the attack. Meshes are close, but then it's side by side. Gajano trying to hold off. Oh no, it's like, sorry, Pushka on the attack. Gajano's fallen back. And they've swapped it side by side on the run to the Nürburgring. And they all oh, touch wheels. They managed to keep it out of each other just about. And Knezovic now has to concede third. Great start from Philip Pushka starting down the order. It's all still sorting itself out in the background. But at the minute, Volborn and Mesheder have just taken off. Pushkin and Knezovic fighting with each other. Myrno trying to find his footing as well. Heyman's lost his front wing. He's dropping down the order. You just see him on screen there. Oh, and there's is... another slow car. A better Julia. Victor B without a front wing. Oh, is it once again a better Julia? And, uh, <laughs> and an Infernal Void car coming together there. We have team boss Paul Muller in the chat with his ice cream, and so far he's, there's going to be a, a negative psychological connection between eating ice cream now, because there seems to be something bad that happens every time. But they are both in the pits. We'll look to get a replay in a minute. But ben, Daniel Benton Reader, an incredible star. He's already up to eight from starting last. But there's quite a... Oh, wow. Look at Murno is on people. inters. Murno is on intermediate tyres. So this explains the poor start. He's dropping down sick. This is the battle ahead of these two that we're watching. Daniel Benton Reader against Jordan. And ahead, Katiba just made it past Murno. And likewise, Benton Reader has now passed Mark Jordan. The amount of people as well that have gone into the pits. There must have been quite a few moments of contact. Peckley, B, Machado, Heyman, Gajano, uh, Fekla and Quercio all having to go in the pits from the first lap. We will try and work out what happened there over the coming laps. But Gonzalez Kativa now up to fifth for Infernal Void. And Knezovic has gotten back ahead of Philip Pushka up ahead. Oh, and Pushka's slow. Pushka has just gone off the road. Add that to the list of things we'll head back to as well. But a moment for Philip Pushka, also on the super soft tyres. And there has been a drive through penalty handed out for Gino Gagliano for driving into Max Heyman. So, let's have a look with it. Oh, we're going to see that now by the looks of it. So here is Max Heyman. Go side by side, heading towards Nürburgring. Oh, and Heyman has to go wide. He's basically overtaken off the track there, unfortunately. But then, ooh, a bit of a silly lunge, unfortunately. And Victor B is just... <laughs> <laughs> in oh. the wrong place at the wrong time and that's why so many go in because they just all end up careening into Gino Gajano so the chain reaction there heading down to uh, the 180 degree turn meantime though Pushka looking to recover from uh, whatever happened to him and we head up towards Imola at the point where uh, Kativo managed to get past the previous lap. He must be in DRS zone. We'll see how close he is. Only a short run down to uh, turn 15. Pretty, pretty close to then get alongside and brave on the brakes through there. Everyone taking it very carefully around that turn 17 curb. 
But Pushka looking quick. It must have been a, a momentary, either a, either a duel with Knezevich or just a momentary mistake because he's looking very quick and he's looking like he's going to get back past Kativo. This is the big opportunity now. DRS wide open. We head down to the Adelaide hairpin. He goes to the inside. And he manages to make the move, and Kativo, not fighting that too hard, gives him the space. And forward we go. And this is the moment. So actually, oh, it looks like it's a mistake under his own steam. He's not close to uh, Knezevich at this point. On just gets a wheel on the curb while applying the power. He spins up the rears, and he's off the track. A momentary mistake for Pushka, but he has managed to recover that position. In the meantime, Lucas Murnau has been into oh. the pits uh, by and got rid of his intermediates. He's now out on the mediums, if I've seen that correctly. So I think that is a very, very wrong strategy call there by Murnau and Cesario. And benefiting from the first lap chaos, Henry Buckland running in eighth for Magnum Motorsports on the Super Softs, just keeping it out of trouble. And just running around quite comfortably at the minute. We'll have to see what his pace is like as he grows into uh, into the race. But he's now got Lucas Murno on the dry medium tyre chasing him down. I think everyone from P9 downwards has been involved in either poor strategy calls or that lap one chaos that we've seen. Absolutely. And uh, it's only... Volborn, Mesheter and Knezevich that seem to now have uh, dropped the rest of the pack. In the meantime, Daniel Benson Reader continuing in his incredible recovery charge up to Gonzalez Cativo. Oh, and the lock up there from Cativo through 180. But Benson Reader with nowhere to go, so he is just going to have to wait for his moment. Um, must be looking to try and line up through uh, the exit of Estoril and get close in the DRS zone down to the hairpin. DRS wing will be open now. See, not much of a time to gain there. It's all about setting yourself up, and you see, to try and avoid the inside of the kerb on turn 17, Benton Reader getting right across the kerb on, on 16, which obviously not as uh, raised, not launching the car as we saw in qualifying. This is Estoril, this long right-hander is the corner that is so crucial if you want to have any chance of making an overtake. And this is looking very good indeed for Benton. Rida Cativo moves late towards the inside, goes deep, and Benton Rida is through. He says thank you very much. It's uh, been a perfect recovery for Daniel Benton Rida. In the meantime, Lucas Murno has caught and passed uh, Henry Buckland back up the front. Still less than a second between these two. Ruben Mesheder up to the rear wing of Yanis Wolborn. It's something we've seen so many times before. But they have had an incredible start and they are off and flying. Catching a little bit of that curb. But very comfortably so. Through Grand Kerber, turn one. And turn three, this big left-hander, Estoril. Bits you out onto the back straight. Although technically what they're going through now is a very gentle corner called uh, golf. But it is essentially a straight, all completely flat. It closes right up to him at the Adelaide hairpin. He just needs to stick with him through the remainder of the lap. And if he's this close again next time, Meshida uh, must be in a good position to maybe look at making the move. And it's going to be interesting for Volborn this afternoon because usually he has a bit of a rear gunner, but he is alone with no Pascal Polans. Yeah, exactly. We've seen this team play be so crucial for them throughout the season, um, where they work so well together, both of them. But now, this time, it is Volborn versus Mesh at a straight on track. We, we actually have seen this uh, duel very, very rarely on track. So, glad to see them fighting it out with each other. About a tenth closer this time around, Ruben Meshed. The question is, is it going to be enough? And can he stick with Yanis Volborn through the first three corners? 
you can see, both slightly different lines. Volborn running it out a lot wider. DRS will be open, and he will gain and gain and gain, but it just seems like he's at arm's length at the moment. But now he's even closer once again. Now, just under three tenths of a second. So it's patience, but it's it's slowly working if he can keep gaining at this rate. Result of that first lap uh, chaos. These are the only two really close in the order at the minute. Everyone quite evenly spread um, as they all try and recover. What's also noteworthy is that Pushke is not making any gains on Knezovic, so Knezovic really on pure pace there in P3, uh, keeping Pushke at bay, so he might be looking for his best WMSC career finish here. And what is very interesting about that is that Knezovic is the only person um, out of the top seven to be on the medium tyre, so he's running uh, that pace with the more durable but less grippy tyre in the meantime, side by side, Victor being Gabriel Peckley through Nürburgring, round 180 we go again, we go charging up to Imola, he just needs to try and stick with him, but oh, very, very slidey through Imola indeed, not in the position to make the move into Chateau de. DRS open and he looks out, but not close enough this time at all. And oh! Oh, did, that's interesting. Did, did we just all see that? <laughs> did uh, Victor B seems to have popped in front of Gabriel Peckley? Actually, uh, I missed that because I'm still trying to sort out the time situation. Who switched on to what? But that might have very well been a connection issue for some of them. That was very odd. So yeah, uh, Victor B come flew behind and then he just popped ahead coming into the uh, into the penultimate corner. So it'll be interesting to see if anything uh, anything comes of that. It's not really in anything anyone can do, sadly. Um, but an odd moment there and Victor B is in the top ten ahead of Peckley in the Potenza car. Peckley finishing uh, in the top three on the road but having to serve that five second penalty Meaning he finished outside the points last time, but his teammate at least did manage to pick up 7th place and ensure Potenza Esports scored uh, points for the second race in a row, for the second time in their history. Speaking of Mateus Machado, uh, he is now under attack from a determined looking Max Heyman in the better Julia. Through the DRS zone we go. He's going to be looking at lining up uh, Machado down that back straight once again. Oh, but Heyman right across the grass there. They're all trying to avoid that curb on the left so hard because we've seen what it can do in qualifying. So far, no one caught out by it. They're rather cutting the first part of the chicane to avoid that curb. And now it looks like Max Heyman is super, super close. I think there will be an attempt towards Adelaide, and he is passed even ahead of the braking zone off that hairpin. Anything Machado can do about it? No. I think Heyman will now head off into the distance. Next car for him is Gabriel Peckley, and wow, look how much he's gaining on him. Oh, that's actually not, not Peckley, that's a Kostak, that is a lap down. Yeah, and worth noting just on that uh, final corner situation once again, remember track limits are punished by the game, not by race control. Um, and if you are have the uh, required number of track limits violations, is uh, a slightly... Oh, oh, that is messy. Oh, I was, I, I was going to say it was an unorthodox way to get out of the way for the Costa, but I don't think he, he was. I don't think he was particularly aware that, that Max Heyman was, uh, was right there. And now he's... Going to be slowing up um, Machado through that final corner as well. It even Mauricio... looked like he was about to overshoot that hairpin there, avoiding uh, Heyman's rear wing. Mauricio Quercio back after serving a race ban from uh, Bentful Monaco Grand Prix. 
But yes, as mentioned, uh, track limits. By the Whoa, oh my goodness. I think he might have some sort of brake issue there because this is the second time this is happening. He did well to avoid uh, Machado there. Now remember, he was also involved in that uh, accident there and he wasn't able to avoid uh, the spun round cars here in that 180 corner. So there might be some sort of issue to the car. Might be worth looking into retiring on safety grounds. Yeah, unfortunately, both the Coztex way off the back at the minute. Um, both of them getting caught up in that incident. In the meantime, though, Philip Pushka has reeled in Alexander Knezovic. Only three tenths between them. And Pushka finally getting his eye back in. But Knezovic will be very happy with this first thing, considering he is on the slower tyre. So we'll interested to see how much he fights this, or if he's just happy to maybe, you know, run as long as he can and just say, like, risk, avoid losing time more than anything, because he's likely going to be running longer than uh, the two ahead of him. In the meantime, Buckland overtaken by Victor B, also on the recovery path. We join Philip Pushka. Both of them tidy through the final corner. So yes. Penalties given out by the game for track limits. They are not rescinded. So once you have enough violations, that's it. So you're going to have to be careful the amount of times you cut turn 16 to avoid uh, the curb inside of turn 17. But Pushka incredibly close this time. A great exit out of Estoril. Tucked under the rear wing. DRS open. Can Knezovic fight back? I think the move's done. Oh, but no. Knezovic trying to hold it on the brakes. They go side by side through Adelaide. Who's got the better traction? It is Pushka. Oh, and there's a... Oh, Kostek without a rear wing there, but out of the way, fortunately. And Philip Pushka gets the move done. Excellent bit of racing there from both of them. Yeah, great respect between these two as well. They were very, very close uh, in lap one. But uh, they've given each other enough room. Hard but fair racing. So, uh, yeah, very well. Very nice for us to watch. Philip Pushka looking to uh, pull out the gap now. He's going to see if he can uh, close the gap to the guys ahead. It'll be interesting to see what his pace is like in open air. If he uh, has a shout today. He said the race winner last time out. Since his move to uh, SCMM has been generally quick every uh, every week. But there have been issues. It's certainly not been a smooth ride. But he's certainly showing his talents once again. Oh, Meantime, they must have been close. Oh yeah, Meshida still only a couple of tenths between them and he's incredibly close this time around. Through Nürburgring we go. He's had to bail out oh. a little bit there. Almost a bit too close. That sweeping right left hand. During the meantime, Gonzalez Cativo is in the pits. Um, that's his first stop. He was on the medium tyre, so I wonder if he's picked up some damage. Um, but he's out of the pits. Oh no, he's on the mid. Oh, so did he start on the super soft? Uh, yeah, he, he did. started on the super soft, so he no. has now used Switched. both tyres. And it must have been Quercio we saw the Costec without the rear wing. He's in there and getting that fixed. Such a tough afternoon for Costec after the hive scoring points for the first time last time. But uh, still a long way to go. It's been a messy start to the afternoon. So anything could happen, but we have had no retirements yet. Everyone's still managing to keep going, despite the slightly messy opening. Uh, in the meantime, Murno looking to recover after the, the poor choice of being on the wrong tyre at the start. On the mediums. Uh, I wonder to... if that had something to do with the warm-up, where some of them tried the Inters and he forgot to change back. But he's not the only car. I've now completely sorted out the entire situation. <laughs> And um, he started on the Inters, and so did Mauricio Quercio, Matthias Machado, and Gabriel Peckley. So four cars starting on the Inters, and that, yeah, they immediately switched. I don't know if this was some sort of gamble. I would understand that from Quercio's, Machado's, and Peckley's point of view. But starting from the front row, that kind of gamble is, uh, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Much. To say yeah. Ways. I, I absolutely. Meantime, uh, the front two slightly disrupting the battle going on between Gino Gajano and uh, Machado. Someone getting kicking up a little bit of gravel there, but everyone seems okay. 
Looks like Walborn's going to be safe this time around if he's managed to pick up some DRS from the bat marker ahead. Head round to Estoril. Meshedon not quite as close this time. Hopefully uh, Machado will be getting out of the way, but he's not going to want to allow Gajano back through. Cleverly holds the inside, but Gajano might have the momentum here. Is he going to look towards Nürburgring? He's got a little bit better exit. Oh, he's only got his nose there. Is he going to force? No, he very smartly decides to pull out of it there. But he's going to look to try and go around the outside. He's climbing all over the back. Gajano very, very looking quick. Started well, remember, but qualified by fourth. Wasn't his first, first lap incident that sent him down the order, so he's looking to recover this afternoon. Credit back close on the exit. Could he actually utilize the DRS zone on this? Down to the run to turn 15. Not much of an opportunity. But he sits and waits his time. In the meantime, Henry Buckland is in the pits for the very first time. Going to switch up ties. We can see him just to the right of the picture there as Gajano charging right behind Mateus Machado. Through Estoril we go. Hopefully not getting too close. Want to wash out wide. And this has got to be the opportunity for him. DRS open. Pulls out. And that looks like move well and truly done there. Machado pulling back in. Gajano up to 12th. Still a bit of work to go, a lap down now, but points not over yet. Still a long way to go. Yeah, and I'm honestly surprised that overtaking is working so well here. So we've seen quite a lot of moves being pulled. Um, so the DRS is really helping on this track that is, or was not really particularly known for its great races in Formula 1 back then. So, uh, yeah, really good to see them. So, so much on track action here. Oh, absolutely. As you say, first time we've uh, seen Manny Core with DRS zones. Uh, creating oh. some moments. Oh, my word. Meshed her over the curb, but all right for now. Yeah. But this can go so wrong so easily. Because the, the wall there also sticks out towards the exit. This is what happened to Philip Pushka in qualifying. The measure is really on the edge there. There's Machado heading out of the pits. Dropped on set of super softs for now. At the minute, it doesn't look like there is any rain threatening for the moment. I think everyone is very comfortably on the dry tyre. See if anything comes of it. In the meantime, Daniel Benton Reader has reeled in Alexander Knezovic. The incredible recovery continues. As we know, Knezovic will be wanting to just make those mediums last as long as possible. Yeah, they don't seem like the quickest tyre choice right now. Still no sign of the super softs going off the cliff. There is a yellow just ahead of them. The, the car that likely caused it is, by the looks of it, a, a back marker. Coming in an unfortunate uh, time for. I think uh, it's it's Buckland. Yeah, and unfortunately, Benton Reader. They're at an unfortunate point. Oh, Buckland does bail out of it, though. Make sure. Uh, He's out of the way. Benton Reader continuing his chase. The minute. Ruben Mesh is still only half a second away from leading Yanis Volborn. Pushka has not been able to cut into the gap. It was at 15 seconds. It's up to 17. In the meantime, Benton Reader is the big mover. Oh, he slides. He's gone wide. Touches the gravel on the exit of Adelaide Chicane. Oh, no, sorry. I've gotten confused. It was Henry Buckland that did that. Um, getting them mixed up in the corner of my eye. Um, Benton Reader is okay, continuing his chase. Buckland sliding out of the way there. Apologies, Daniel.
heading towards turn 15. Benton Reader looking a lot closer this time around. Again, over the grass of turn 16. Less than a second between them. As we've seen from the gap between Volborn and Meshida, um, being about seven or eight tenths isn't quite close enough to pull a move, even with DRS down this back straight. So he's got to be a little bit closer than that, but with him being in range, he can hopefully work his way up. Speaking of which, the gap between the front two is uh, four tenths. Meshida getting a bit closer, so do our best to keep an eye on both fights for you as we uh, as we continue on. But Benton Reader now getting very closer, but he's ooh, looking a little bit uh, a little bit out of control there. Just for comparison, um, last lap set by Alexander Knezovic was a 1 minute 16.1. Oh! Wolborn in the pits. Is it both of them? Wait, they it in. Both, both of them, yeah. They're going together, so about 20 laps for the Super Softs. They come in very close, they go out at the same time. Giannis Wolborn avoiding the undercut there. And Meshida following in, so they're out on the hard tyres. So we might expect to see Philip Pushka and Daniel Benton Reader coming in for their stops uh, potentially very soon. In fact, I think Benton Reader is in by the looks of it, looking at the way he's cutting down the order. But from that pit stop, Meshter has come out and he's very, very close again. So it could be a very important outlap here. Head towards 180. close to impossible thing to try anything on this part of the track. He has to wait at least until that second DRS zone that will be coming up right after this corner here. And it looks like Wolborn got a little bit out of shape there, so he's very, very close. Question is, is this little run long enough? I don't think it is, but he will use the DRS to get closer. Stays tucked firmly behind. And now it's all about the exit from this final chicane. Both of them quite tidy. Meshi just leaves it seeming looking a little bit more confident to take a bit more of that curb than many. Uh, in the meantime, Philip Pushka in the pits, but Ruben Meshda half a second away through Estoril, but there's a black marker just ahead. Is the DRS going to save yeah. Volborn this time around? And there, yes, he's got DRS, so he's able to defend against him for this lap. Oh. Unfortunately, all of the Potenza esports car has not gotten out of the way at all. And that's going to close them right up together. Oh, and he's not really getting out the throttle enough. And he might... Oh, very close to splitting them through Nürburgring. Ruben Meshter would have been spitting feathers if that was the case. Yeah, I think still there might be a penalty on the cards for that Potenza Esport car there. Because there was enough of room to let them both through in the hairpin. I think that was uh, Gabriel Peckley. Um, in the way there but it seems it's not hurt or helped anyone really the gap about the same so we'll get to try again but it seems like based on the timing Volborn might get lucky again if he's close enough to the back marker ahead out of the final chicane here we go again and Yanis Volborn fastest lap of the race 1 minute 14.9 beating uh, Ruben Meshida's previous best by just 4 hundredths of a second an SCMM car ahead. Is, is Volborn close enough this time? Over the line we go. I don't think he's got DRS this time. So Meshida will close right in. Now it's about staying as close to that Holland Racing Team car throughout the remainder of the lap. Which is the thing that's so, so difficult. Stands everyone on the Super Softs. Uh, has stopped inside the top eight, apart from Mark Jordan, the last of the Supersoft runners. Victor B also on the Supersofts, albeit they will be a lap fresher after his uh, opening lap stop. And oh, this SCMM and having to get out of the way, and then this is going to provide a very important gap. 
for Yanis Volborn, and he might be out of DRS range. Coming Mesut down the back looks, straight. He looks like he's struggling a bit there, sliding through that final sector there. Really struggling through the final chicane. And Meshida going, uh, sorry, Wolbon going even quicker. Um, until 14.3. Had a few moments there trying to get past the uh, the SCMM of uh, Gino Gagiano. Forward we go. Oh, I'm hearing my own voice in my headphones at the minute, so bear with me. <laughs> So maybe I'll I'll take over for a minute until we have uh, <laughs> fixed those issues, these sound issues. Uh, sorry for that. If you also heard Ash's voice double, yeah, the Ruben Meshida... that is bad. Sorry, yeah, I, I I'm back. I'm back now. Oh, okay. Apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, hearing my voice once is is bad enough. So apologies for that. Um... Oh, it's not it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Meshida now with some work to do. 1.5 seconds behind Yanis Volborn, really having a few uh, unfortunate moments while lapping the SCMM car, and it's uh, allowed Volborn some important respite, and they managed to negotiate the first round of stops uh, without any issue. Yeah, but at least it looks like uh, Meshida has caught himself. He didn't look uh, this troubled uh, the last time. Around he set quite similar lap times to Yannis Wolborn, so the gap has not increased any further. And this here is the next battle: Inferno Void against the sister team, Valachita Virtuali. Jordan should not make this all too difficult, Bocativo. Especially he's on a 25 lap old super soft, so. Might not have much to fight with. In the meantime, Victor B, who was on 24 lap old Supersofts, he's in for his pit stop. I imagine to switch uh, to mediums. Evo calmly reeling in. Head towards Imola. A sweeping set of corners and slamming hard on the brakes into turn 15. And Kativo getting a little bit hard on the inside there. Not the best exit. But he's slowly getting closer and closer to Jordan through the final chicane. And clips both corners beautifully there. Charge through turns one up to Estoril. I'll tell you what, even though uh, Jordan's super softs are old, he uh, doesn't seem to be struggling too badly for grip. But DRS will be open for Gonzalez Cativo now. And look at the amount he's pulled him in, and I think Jordan might have spotted and made sure not to make that too difficult. And Cativo sweeps through and up into seventh place. Jordan surely due his first stop pretty soon. Well, actually, I think Mark Jordan is looking for a one-stop race here. Once again, an unusual strategy, but this might this might work very well. Not uh, he's not far off. He's going to have to just uh, manage his pace as much as possible. But obviously, if rain does come, that may scupper his plans, or it may fall into his lap. He may just need to do the one-stop to a. Uh, to an intermediate tyre, but see if that happens. In the meantime, Max Heyman up to Gino Gagiano. These two coming together on lap one. Now it's time for round two. Can Heyman take the place back and get into the top ten? Remember, points down to eight.
Heyman within a second through this DRS zone. Got to keep it tidy through that final chicane. Nicely done. So far, no big dramas for anyone. Coming at that final chicane yet. Gap seven tenths as we wind through Esteril. Just waiting for the moment to be able to get full throttle through the DRS detection zone. Heyman will be close enough for DRS. Will it be close enough to make the move? Winds in. Towards Adelaide we go. And again, it brings him a little bit closer, but it's it's a waiting game. Seems like you've got to build overtakes over the course of a couple of laps. And I guess here's one overtake building. We've seen this before for the Pushka against uh, Alexander Knezovic. Now Knez is still out there on the mediums that he started this race with. Philip Pushkin, in the meantime, has switched onto those mediums and is looking to make it past the Scuderia Cesario driver once again. He might be close enough the next time they head towards Adelaide Hairpin. It will be interesting to see what Knezovic does. Oh, and in the meantime, Philip Feckler has become our first retirement of the day. The Coztec. Uh, Not sure. Show heading in as well. We assume for a stop. Um, we'll see what happens there. But in the meantime, yes, Pushka very close. And it's be interesting for Knezovic. Obviously, one of a, of a few. In fact, the only one to start on the mediums. So it'll be interesting to see how long he can go uh, relatively competitively with these. But as you can see... He's got much less grip coming through Estoril. It's going to be very easy for Philip Pushka. DRS is open, I imagine. Oh, no, Knezovic is look. I thought he was going to fight it for a minute there to the extreme inside. And through goes Philip Pushka. Knezovic uh, bought that a little bit more than I, than I thought, thought. Although he's... The car's looking very similar on my screen. <laughs> it's just very dark. It almost looks like they've got very similar shades this time. Um, whereas the, uh, yeah, the, the SCMM car are usually a darker shade of red than the Cesario. Oh, that is a drift into that corner there. The same power <laughs> from Philip Pushka. In the meantime, Buckland has retired for a second. But it Looks like he's back out again. And here's what happened to uh, to Philip Fackler. He just headed in and retired by the looks of it. Um, Buckland, Buckland's in the pits. Yeah, we'll I, I just saw he, he disconnected. So he's uh, back in the race. Damn. This is what happened. To Janis Wolborn last time. So he's back in the session. Let's see if he decides to head out once again. Got a few more kilometers of practice in. A little twitch of a wheel then. He it's not like he's gonna come out. Um worth noting that it amongst all that, Lucas Murno setting the fastest lap of the race now, 14.2, but he's uh, on the super soft still and in clear air. Uh, but he's looking to hunt down Daniel Benton, reader. Meantime, uh, Heyman versus Gajano. Still not resolved. Heyman still behind Gajano. And uh, oh, looking a little bit out of shape. Big turn 15. Here is Henry Buckland. Back out on track. Caught by the leaders of Ruben, uh, Ruben Mescher and Yanis Volborn. Uh, does get out of the way, but Mescher can't seem to stick with Volborn on those medium tyres. Yeah, I think the medium's working a lot better on that Holland Racing Team car. Um, but what we've also heard from the drivers in those post-race interviews is how crucial DRS is this season. So uh, you gain multiple tenths a lap if you are in that uh, DRS window and can use it. Um, but as soon as you're out, you may drop behind several turns. So even if you can't keep up 
with the pace uh, naturally, you can keep up with the car ahead if you're just in that DRS window. And worth noting, uh, Mark Jordan has finally gone in for his stop on lap 31. So he is now onto the mediums. And now, I, I guess, looking to stay almost to the end of the race, currently winning in the last points paying position. So if he can stretch those mediums, which considering he's been able to make the super softs last, last for half the race, uh, that makes you think he can, he might be in a decent position for points. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Knaz is also still out there on those uh, mediums that he started this race on. So I don't see any reason why Mark uh, should not be able to make this work. It'll be interesting to see if... Uh, the leaders uh, who have uh, done the super soft to mediums route, they look to uh, to run it to the end of the race now as well. Obviously, weather not considering uh, at this point. I could rem imagine Mesut would like to get rid of them as soon as he can, but uh, that would mean an extra pit stop. Fortunately, not got a free pit stop to the cars behind him at this point. I would say both Pushka and Knezevich close enough uh, to overhaul him should he make that decision. So I don't think that's really an option for him at this moment in time. But Jordan now under pressure immediately from Victor B. And it looks like B is just sent it at the inside. I remember this is sister teams fighting each, each other. So they are most likely going to keep it respectful. Yeah, but I, I think this, this one might be very interesting towards the end of this race. They may be sister teams, but right now in the Constructors' Championship, they are actually proper opponents because the, the first team, Inferno Void, they had such rotten luck this season that they are now actually in a fight with uh, Velocita Virtuali. So, not sure if there will be cross team orders. Uh, to what, oh, I, is this rain? That's rain. I'm seeing. There's raindrops, I think. 5% on the radar. The rain has arrived as Gabriel Peckley on the back of Max Heyman. Heyman, who was charging up behind Gino Gagiano, seems to have dropped back and is struggling. I wonder if anything happened to him. But Heyman. Messi now, is in the pits. Is he going to make the call early and try and get straight onto intermediate tires? That would be a big decision. Oh, but it's no. the super soft. He's had enough. Is that. The wrong time for that decision. Well, I mean, in those cold and rainy uh, circumstances, and this is actually Philip Pushka side by side. Is it Philip Pushka or is it? It is. It, it is. is. Oh, Meshida holds on. Well, shows you what I know. He's been able to get in now the pits and hold on to second place. A pit stop. Uh, not taking that much time here at Manny Core. It's a very short entry, and then you can get on the throttle quite early, running through the exit around the outside of Estoril. So he's been able to hang on. That's uh, that's brilliant for Ruben Meshida in terms of track position. Not so sure about the choice of tyre though. Well, I mean, if it's just staying a very light drizzle and nothing that uh, forces anyone onto the inter. Then I think the softer tyre is always the better option in these kind of well, undecisive uh, oh. conditions because Ball horns in. Yeah, I think that is only that does only make sense because if he waits too long, Mercedes will be in undercut territory, and this is very easy for Yannis Wilborn. Well, that's interesting. They've gone like for like, so rather than split strategy and take the risk on the the rain sticking around. He's going for, okay, fine, if it gets heavier, at least we know we're both in the same boat. So, and now at least Ruben Meshter is on a tyre that he prefers, but they'll both be keeping one eye on the weather. Now, Knezovic, what's he gone for? Is that softs as well? I think it is. Yep. And that, and of course, and he was, that. so that's lap 35 he's gotten to, over half race distance on the set of mediums so a great stint from him he's on the super softs the question is how long will he be on them 
Yeah, I mean, what uh, what uh, plays in his favor is that the cars are now much lighter and tire wear should now be less than it was at the start of this race. And we've seen how well Mark Jordan was able to make this work with a very long stint on the Super Softs. So I think but... Meza will, will just stick with that one stop, sorry. Not okay, I was just going to say Jordan very much doing it the hard way round, it seems. Um, but still well placed. Coming Back on the... Oh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just I wanted to, to continue on the point between uh, Wilborn and Meshaban, and the strategy battle. I think Wilborn is now in a very comfortable decision uh, situation where he can just decide what he does based on what Meshaban does because if they just do the same thing he will always stay ahead uh, he has enough of a gap to react on any undercut that Meshada tries so uh, yeah he should save just doing the same thing what Meshada does absolutely and it's just the case of um, judging the wet weather and if it does get wet enough to require uh, a wet weather tyre interesting to see what their, their laps are like. We've not seen a representative lap time from Yanis Volborn yet, because um, his first lap was, of course, an outlap. So we will see it very soon. But here comes Meshda, pushing very hard indeed. Um, that is his personal fastest lap of the race. Last time out, a 1 minute 14.7. See how he does. Uh... Baldwin crosses the line, does a 14.5. Meshida crosses the line. And that's a 14.5 as well. So they are both running similar pace, but Meshida needs to be able to try and cut into it. The gap, five seconds now. As you say, Baldwin just needs to uh, keep it calm. You need to hold Meshida at arm's length. Murno has worked his way up back into P4. That would still be a good result. He might still be out of sync with the pit stops because, uh, well, he had that odd strategy starting on the inters. And obviously he switched to mediums but didn't stay on them for as long as, say, Jordan or Knezovic did. Uh, he only did 26 laps on, on the medium. Um, so those super softs are already coming up to 10 laps old. I, I think he may have to stop again. But again, if he bides his time based on the weather, it might neutralize itself because it might just be he stops for wet tires along with everyone else and he can hold that position. Yeah, exactly. This will be uh, what Murno is hoping for because then he can stay in fourth. If he stops again, he will drop behind... Benton, Reed, and Knezovic at this rate. Knezovic definitely won't stop again. We're pretty sure of that. Benton, Reed, well, he switched onto the mediums in lap 20. I think he will come in again. This is his teammate, Max Heyman, in the pits. Oh, this is only sneaky. his second stop, right? Because I think he came in in lap 1, switched onto the mediums then, started on the super softs. Yes, he's been able to go back, straight back onto the mediums because obviously he started on the super softs. So he's essentially got his super soft run out of the way. So he is hoping that that is going to sort him out to the end of the race. Yeah, pretty interesting choice because I think now you could even make the super soft work towards the end. And the super soft is A, quicker and B, I Usually it should be easier to get them in the temperature window than the hard or, or medium tie in his case in these conditions. See how he does. He's got quite a sizable gap up to the next car. 19 seconds to Gabriel Peckley. But he was at one point on the tail of uh, Gino Gagliano trying to get into the top 10. Hoping that this, uh, this stop might help him gain some places over other people. Uh, Philip Pushkin now in the meantime on the medium tyre. Didn't have his best qualifying but has worked his way up into the podium positions once again. And is running very well and is currently only 10 seconds away from Yanis Volborn. But obviously those front two having done an extra stop 
he might be hoping for the weather to maybe uh, turn. It could give him an opportunity. And it uh, puts everyone on uh, the same sort of tire life. In the me At the minute, he's uh, running mediums that are coming up for 20 laps old. But not under any immediate pressure. Uh, Lucas Murno also on very worn super softs behind him. And then quite a back gap uh, to Daniel Benton Reader, who's uh, similarly on 20 lap old medium tyres. And you have to give it to these drivers here today. Um, despite this being such a technical track and the conditions with the weather being quite difficult, it's been a it's been a pretty clean race apart from lap one. So uh, everyone's keeping it on track and doing very well out there. Yeah, despite the chaos, it is still remarkable. We've only seen one DNF, and that seemingly had nothing to do. Uh, with that first lap incident, it might have been, you know, damage sustained from that that caused Philip Beckler to decide, you know, that's enough for today. Um, but yeah, otherwise everyone has uh, kept running. Super Perko in the chat asking, we can't see rain on the car, so is it really not raining? Um, we still have 5% rain in our data, so there is a bit of rain, but not really much. And the track is not really being affected by it in any way, so uh, yeah, really yeah, and, just a very light drizzle. Yeah, and track wetness is still at zero to five percent, so it seems like the majority of the track is, is most likely still dry. So definitely not raining enough to tempt anyone yet. It's only gonna maybe tempt people if it gets a little bit uh, wetter. But Jordan's in, Machado's in. And Pushka in from third. And it's medium for me. Oh, oh no, interestingly, my timing screen is saying Inters. Is it? No, Inters, that is interesting. The, Lucas Murno as well. Also for Inters. Everyone that's just come into the pit has gone for Inters. And actually, the radar's just got up to 15% rain. Super Palco. Congratulations on your honorary commentator's curse. The rain has just gotten a bit heavier. Yeah, I was, a, was really surprised to see Jordan in, but if indeed the conditions have worsened, then this makes total sense. And most importantly, Philip Pushka, who was only 10 seconds behind uh, Yanis Volborn uh, at the time of stopping, has made the call first. So if Volborn and Meshta don't react as quickly, can Pushka put himself into the picture as well this afternoon? It's going to be interesting to see what Meshta does as well, because this pit stop now is is going to be important for Warbon's gaining in. some Warbon's time, in. and that's decisive. That's that's the call that had to be had to be made. I don't think Meshta is in. Is he? Oh, he is. the gap's so big. Wow. Yep, he's in. He's got a uh, bat marker just ahead and he's going to want to try and get ahead although it, unless that's the graphics not updating I think it is I think he's gone onto the mediums over that was the uh, Bernal Void or Vela Cheetah even um, but Pushka comes through and unfortunately everyone reacts quick enough but that has played into Lucas Murno's hands perfectly um, because he was a bit of out of, out of sequence on tyres and now he stops with everyone else and he's just on the intermediate. Oh, you know what? Victor B might be on the on the mediums. We'll see if that updates because I've got two timing screens showing me different things. But Genezovic in for his inters. Yeah, he got caught yeah. out by that. His strategy didn't work now with the, with the rain picking up. And yes, it has updated. So everyone, apart from Quercio, it seems at the minute, I think that might just be a delay in updating. I think everyone has made the switch now to intermediate tyres. Uh, it's it's suddenly gotten a lot wetter very quickly. 15% rain. See it on the wider shots there. Here is Philip Pushkin now. Only two seconds away from even Mesh de Volborn. Um has been able to just increase the gap so much 
since uh, the end of that first stint. And Pushka is now looking at maybe putting the pressure on Meshida ahead of him. And he's got a back marker in between them. Charge through, and that is Victor B, I think. Be uh, searching for the grip on his new Inters. Pushka will be hoping that uh, B clears out of the way relatively quickly. As, uh, he might be sensing a chance at a second place this afternoon. Yeah, that would be an awesome recovery after crashing out and qualifying. I think he's still managed six. Still in qualifying. Uh, yep, yeah, that's correct. Sixth place. Teammate Gajano is the, the guy who's lost out the most, uh, starting fourth back in tenth due to that first lap incident. Uh, whereas Murno, solid recovery from him after the wrong tyre at the start. He started second, but back up to fourth, which isn't too oh. bad of a return. Oh, and there's a Coztec just off the road there, getting a bit sideways. It's Marisa Quercio. And it looks like there's another Batman because a Potenza just ahead. It is. I think the Coztec has just pulled off into the pits in the background. It has. Push oh, now lose the Potenza a bit off the road there. I think there's a few people struggling to adapt now the weather's coming down. Track very much getting wetter. And Quercio is actually, looks like, if the timing screen's correct, he's pulling a bit of a risk. He's going full wet. Um, which I don't think it's quite at that level yet. But he clearly must be have been struggling for grip. Um, yeah, Pushka is... Uh, oh, Quercio has just been giving a penalty. That must be uh, pit lane speeding, I imagine. Just been in and out of the pits. But yeah, as I was saying, Pushka has uh, lost a bit of time to Meshda uh, over overhauling those bat markers. There's a car just ahead. I can't tell if that is Meshida. It isn't, by the looks of it. I, I oh, think it is. Or actually. is it? I think it is. 1.4 oh. seconds the gap only. I don't know if Meshida made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, it's come right back down. I mean, wow, you can, he's very tentative at the moment. Clearly not feeling comfortable. Yeah, well, that car may just not be set up for these conditions. That could also be the case. But Pushki is much, much quicker. It is worth noting the initial design philosophy of that Holland Racing Team car this year is a high downforce setup. And in the wet, it is suiting Yanis Volborn to the ground. As mentioned in the chat, Yanis Volborn is also an excellent driver in the rain. Um, but Meshida's car is more average and balanced in its setup. The SCMM car similarly, um, similarly uh, sharing that initial design philosophy. But at the minute, Meshida is uh, yeah not looking comfortable at all, and Pushka is is now reeling them in. But I think Pushka has to make it without DRS in these conditions. Now Quercio is back in the pits. That must be to serve his penalty. Uh, from the last time he was in the pits. Uh, doesn't, doesn't, can't see any work being done on the car. Out he comes, and as you can see, he has got the blue tyres on. So he has gone for full wets. Oh, he's just got a... No, another... I think that's frame. Oh, he got a penalty again. He's got another penalty. Has he just... Has he just sped in the pit lane for a second time? Oh, what a shame. How oh, very odd. It would, would, it would have been interesting to see, uh, you know, what he could have done on the wet tyres, but uh, like he's going to be doing another lap straight back round into the pits at this point. Six stops he's had today, Mauricio Quercio. Not been the most enjoyable return to action for him. Philip Pushka is... Oh, and oh, Meshed is deep. Very, very deep indeed. 
Meshida is struggling in these conditions. And I, I think you might be right. Oh, and there's Kostek off the road. That is um, Quercia once again. I think you're right, Robin. I think maybe the car was set up geared for a more dry race and that just hasn't come off because he's looking very tentative because we know that Ruben Meshida can drive in the wet. He's, you know, very solid driver in the wet, but he's looking a um, little bit skittish at the moment. Yeah, and it seems like the wetness of the track is picking up because we see signs of spray there. Ooh, what? but also Pushka struggling in these conditions. The rain intensity hasn't actually improved, um, or increased, I should say, um, since everyone dived in for the Inters. It's still at 15%, but track wetness is up to highs of 40%. That is the definitive change, as you can see. You can see it in the spray, you can see it in how many of them are fighting for grip. Um, that is an awkward moment to come across a bat marker. Buckland there trying to stay out the way. And Pushka through. He's saying no DRS, so it's going to be all about the all important braking zone into Adelaide now. Or Ruben Meshida. He needs to be a lot more on it this time. Uh, oh my goodness, and he is, but Pushka, as you can see, just feels like his car feels so much more responsive. The front end um, turning on a dime there um, compared to uh, Ruven Meshida's optimal esports car. Are they concertina up together, 3180? All in the meantime, it's. Uh, Increasing gap at the front for Yanis Volborn. I think at this point, Bullborn just has to stay on track and he will win this one. But this battle is going to be very interesting because Pushki can go much quicker, but he's nowhere is he close enough to actually try something. Right now, it looks like he has to wait for a mistake from Mesher to get the opportunity. To slip past the optimal. It looked like it's a bit of a broad slide into 15 from Meshida there. It is hoping there's another one of those mistakes. This is the all important exit now in terms of Estoril, who can get the power on. It's all about being able to be close enough to sit in the slipstream. But then you've got to be brave on the brakes in the wet. And see, he is getting closer and closer. But a defensive car positioning for Meshida. But that's it. Oh. I think Meshida's run too wide there. Oh, but the exit is better. Oh, and that was almost a very good opportunistic move to do the up and under from Pushka. But all important traction at the all important moment for Meshida. Oh, and again, though, it's quite deep into each corner, unless that's just the way he feels comfortable taking it. Just kind of going wide and then swooping back in to get the power down going for slow in fast out whereas Pushka is kind of taking a quicker entry that's compromising his exit speed very close up to turn 15 but Pushka again is, is just going to be waiting to set up the move very tentatively through that final chicane. So, through Grand Kerber, we go once again. Six tenths between them. Pink of turn two. And the big sweeping right-hander that is Estoril. About six tenths between them. And the question is, is Pushka feeling brave on the brakes? He doesn't look quite as close this time. And uh, Meshda doesn't feel like he needs to go defensive. Both taking the racing line, but Pushka closing right up to the back once again. At the moment, this battle, though, not pushing these two in towards Lucas Murno at the minute. They're both still going quick enough. But Myrno is, uh, isn't a concern for either of them just yet. Yeah, I think also Myrno's lap times are not quite quick enough to be of any concern. 
after them to the rest of the race. 20 laps remaining, as you see on the top there. 15.8 seconds to overcome. And the last lap times, well, Lucas Murnau was gaining 0.6 seconds on them, so this is not enough. I think the developing battle might be for fifth place. Um, Alexander Knezovic only 1.5 behind Daniel Benton Reader, but last time through, uh, his lap time was half a second quicker. So if he can keep that up, he might be fighting to get back into the top five ahead of a recovering Benton Reader. Uh, so we'll have to see if he can keep those times up the next time they pass through the line. Oh. But the minute, oh, and Meshed is deep again. Oh, but again, just the better exit. I think touch wheels. I think Pushka having to bail out of it to avoid any worse contact. I think Pushka just needs to be patient. Uh, it's It seems like it's only a matter of time. Yeah, I think you'd always stick to the far outside then in the next couple of laps and try and turn in pretty sharply to, yeah, use the situation when Measure the runs wide again because he's been doing that now for the third or fourth time. Oof, but he's very close. Um, through turn 14, Chateau Deux. Again, it's just about nailing these corners. Oh! oh! Big slide by Meshida. Just hangs on to second place. Gonna be very compromised now, but again, it's an awkward corner to follow closely, uh, especially in the wet, so Push is gonna have to just ease off a little bit through Estoril. But if he can be this close on exit, about three tenths away, this is going to be his best opportunity. And he has done. He's nailed that perfectly. Tucked right under the rear wing. This is the opportunity. So which side does Reuven Mesha to go to try and defend? Which side does Philip Pushka go to attack? It's to the outside for Philip Pushka. Who's the last of the late breakers? They go side by side through Estoril. Mesha to leaving the space on the outside. Who's got the traction? They're still side by side as they run towards Nürburgring. But Pushka's just managed to do it. And Meshida tucks in, deciding not to risk leaving his nose in through Nürburgring. Philip Pushka finally gets the move done. In the meantime, that developing battle has arrived. And it's Knezovic now incredibly close. Half a second. And in fact, it looks so much closer through Estoril. I think there was a car just off track to the left of screen there. I think we might see them potentially get in the way of this battle. Oh, they duck out the way. It's a Potenza Esports car. Knezovic, though, not going for it this time. Benton Reader tidy to the inside. Yeah, just uh, in time that this battle has developed now. Very well done move by Pushka there around the outside. You rarely see that in such a tight hairpin, but he executed that one very cleanly. All about making the most of uh, of what grip you can find in these conditions and uh, doing that perfectly. Nesovic remaining three tenths away from Benton Reader. Looking much more confident in these conditions than the man running in fifth place. Once again needs similar to uh, what we've just seen Philip Pushka do. By his time, and line him up through these corners, out of the final chicane we come. Benton Reader's been able to just pull a little bit of a gap in that lap. Maybe just the perils are being stuck up behind. In fact, his lap time was two tenths quicker. As if it needs to run up, and Benton Reader, oh, he struggled through Estoril massively there. I think he's either had a bit of a slide or just gotten a bit out of shape. And this is a huge opportunity for Knezovic. So what side does he go to? He's being forced to the outside. Is he going to try and switch back? Oh, we can't. And Benton Reed is just able to place his car. So Knezovic can't swing to the inside. And a great bit of defense from Benton Reed. I thought he was done for after that exit from Estoril. Yeah, exactly. But I think Knezovic got in a bit too deep there. There was a chance for the up and under. But he was already too far alongside and got dragged on into that corner, so he couldn't cut below Benton Reader. 
Don't know if that might work a second time, this, this defense for Benton Rita, because now, for the next time, Knezovic will be prepared for this situation, I'm pretty sure. Managed to keep the gap even closer this time around. As you can see, though, having to feel his way out there for the grip and very tentative on applying the throttle. Ito through the chicane again. Benton Reader has again done a good job through that final sector. He seems a little bit quicker just to get a little bit of space. Oh, oh there's a car off the road here. Hopefully that's not going to be an unsafe rejoin. Well controlled. I think that might have been the Magnum of Henry Buckland. But here we go. Knezovic through. Benton Reader's had a much better run through Estoril this time. As you saw, Knezovic just having to correct a little mini slide under the throttle. Not close enough to make the move. Oh. He does glide to the inside and he managed to slide it up there. The question is, who's going to put the power down more? I think Ben Sarini's got a better exit. They clash. A little bit of contact and Knezovic gets the move done. It's certainly less dignified than Pushka's move, but he's done it. And it's a very, very clever little last minute move to the inside from Knezovic to catch Benton Reader off guard. And I also think Benton Reader once again got up in, it got in a bit too deep, he ran a bit wide, didn't hit the apex there. And this is what allowed Knezovic alongside. So, not as cleanly and not as uh, exciting as the parts that uh, Pushka performed earlier, but very well done there by Knezovic to anticipate that situation. Precious, can Benton Reader mount any form of response? Much quicker, it seems, through this final sector, but does seem to be struggling. A little less confident than Knezovic um, through corners like Adelaide and 180. See now if Knezovic can uh, just eke out a bit of a gap on the exit of Estoril. Gap is holding it about half a second, but I don't think Benton Reader is going to uh, have a chance to fight back. We'll see if, uh, if uh, now things switch around. Well, so far, it doesn't look like Knezovic can pull away quite as quickly as Pushka was able to pull away from Meshadur, so he can't afford to make any sort of mistake, because then Benton Reader will be right alongside. But as you said, this is something we need to watch now. Because through this middle part of the track, it looks like Knezza can get away from the Battle Julia just that little bit. I think it's uh, the pace discrepancy is much less uh, between these two than it was between uh, Pushka and Meshida. I think you could say for uh, Knezovic is just patient and focus on focuses on what he's doing. I think he will be able to slowly roll. Oh, and Benton Reed is in, in fact. Yeah, but he got enough of a gap to have a free pit stop. Don't know if, if this is really because the Inters are already off the cliff. I seriously doubt that. I need to switch. Um, in terms of a, a weather update, the track wetness has remained the same, but weather has reduced to just 5%, so not raining as much, but crucially still raining. Um, yeah, Benton Reader clearly just deciding, you know, I, I need some grip. Um, it'd be interesting, you know, you'd see if Knezovic decides to respond and also cover him off, or if Knezovic just feels comfortable running these to the end. And Benton Reader is uh, running behind a uh, Infernal Void. And here is Knezovic. Oh, sorry, not an Infernal Void. Um, that is the... Uh, that's the race leader of Yanis Volborn. 20 seconds clear. Oh, that is now a very unfortunate position to be in for Daniel Benton Reader because it looks like he could, could go a bit quicker than Volborn. But he needs to be very, very careful. 
to try and find his way past the race leader. Because if he takes him out, he'll be in a lot of trouble. And that is very interesting that, uh, as you can see, there is clearly some issues with those Inters going off. Just of how much quicker uh, Daniel Benton Reader is going. So, um, yeah, maybe it is a case that actually the Inters are kind of falling off a bit of a cliff. Well, that is interesting. They all switched in around lap 14. So that is only 16, 17 laps. And what does Benton Reader do now? Does Wolbon allow him past? I don't think he is. Is oh, he? Oh, Wolbon just goes a bit deep there. If anything, I don't think he was. I think he's... He is struggling. And seeing how, you know... This gap difference, I'm not surprised this isn't triggering more people to come in. We've got Murno and B in now. Yeah, but... this might also be an opportunity for Meshada, maybe. Try and see if he can do anything about Pushkin. Because he <laughs> will gain a free pit stop now that Murno is in. They've both gone past the pits this time around. Um, so it's going to be next time around. I mean, Yanis Volborn is now going to be seeing this firsthand, how much uh, a fresh set of Inters is, is, is quicker. Does he go into cover off? Um, I, or is he worried about losing track position uh, at this point? We'll see what he does. Come round turn 15. Is he going to pull straight ahead and straight off? He does. I think that's the smart decision for Yanis Volborn because I feel like it's going to be um, it's going to be the decision that most people make. Oh, and there was an SCMM going a bit sideways across the line there. Dano is okay. I think he did have a bit of a moment, but he's kept it out of the wall. In the meantime, Yanis Volborn, smart call, fresh inters for him. It does at least release Daniel Benton Reader, uh, and Knezovic hasn't responded, so. This could be a good opportunity for Daniel Benton Reader. Um, get back ahead. Meshida is in, though. Crucially, I don't think Pushka's gone in either. So, an important lap now for even Meshida. Yep, and I see. Let's just compare lap time. So, Daniel Benton Reader's last lap, and this was still the one where he was stuck behind Yanis Wolbon, was a 128.0 compared to Alexander Knezovic ahead of him. 129.8, so this is almost two seconds, and now Benton Reader is released. So, Knezovic might be in a bit of trouble here. Absolutely. Now, I can't remember what the, the gap was between Meshida and Pushka before Meshida came in. I think it was over two seconds. But if that is the amount of time being lost, it could still be quite close by the time they come round. And Knezovic has stayed out. Yeah, I think he has now committed to this. Um, B is far enough back. Oh, and we've just had a 10 second penalty applied to Reuven Meshida from race control for a pit lane incident with Gonzalez Cativa, which I didn't spot that at all. Um, but potentially, if we saw the pictures of it, we were too busy. Uh, ruminating and looking at timing sheets to, to see, but I, we'll see if we can get a replay of that, but he has been given a 10 second penalty um, so Philip Pushkin now might feel a little less uh, concerned about heading into the pits, the gap is 20 seconds there is about 11 laps to go um, will I, I think there is a chance that Meshida could easily pull Pushka in on the tyre difference, but pulling him in and putting 10 seconds on him, I think uh, might be a bit too much of an ask. I don't think this will be possible, but he has to worry about Lucas Murnau behind, because the gap between Meshid and Murnau is 11.1 seconds, so right now he would be clear of Murnau, even with the penalty, so let's see what happens here. This is Kativo heading into the pit lane, and now it... Oh... It's an unsafe yeah. release. Yeah. yeah. He just needed to hold on the brakes there for a second to allow Cativo to come in. 
though. This is going to be interesting now, as you say. Uh, and Merno has, has stopped, so he's also on fresh inters. Neza must have been in the pits as well, because he's now behind Benton Rita, so he's given up on that. Push it in, because he's now also aware of the... Even if he drops behind Mesher, he'll be safe. The where he comes out on track. I think that might be Mesheda in the very back of the screen now. That past the pit lane. Is that Mesheda coming across the start yeah, finish I think, line? I think Pushka might still be ahead of Mesheda. Yes, this is Ruben. So, the right decision made at just the right moment. I think if he'd left it a lap longer, he would have been behind. Well, if I'm very honest, right now, the track looks like it is drying even, so if someone wants to do a big gamble, maybe, maybe head out onto the... Oh, Mauricio Kwasio has actually done it. I don't think he will gain anything by that. He looks like he's struggling a bit. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is working. So it has... It has stopped raining by the looks of it, but the track is still anywhere between completely dry to 40% wet. Um, based oh. on what, what Mauricio Quercio has just done, I think that might be more leaning towards the 40% there as he slides it up on the curb. Keeps it going, but he's got to be very careful now rejoining the track. Just stay to the side and avoid it. I think he's uh, he's gambled but maybe gambled a bit too early on that one. In the meantime, Victor B's just been given a penalty. And it's for ignoring Blue Flags versus Lucas Murno. So it's a drive through for Victor B. Uh, so that means he will lose out to Gonzalez Cativo, his teammate, but he might still get out ahead of Mark Jordan, 16 seconds back. As you can see, very short entry into the pit lane. And there's not much of a run out either. In fact, most of the pit exit is at full racing speed as well. Contivo up to seventh now. Mesher is holding Murno at bay at the moment. Still 1.5 seconds clear of him if you add the 10 seconds to Mesher's finishing time. Now, in the meantime. I think Victor B has served his penalty and managed to hold on to 8th place. Um, so the gap is still saying like 20 seconds. I think we may have to wait for uh, for them to pass a sector. I think now it's it's right. Well, There's quite a gap then between uh, between the two, even post-penalty. Uh, in the meantime, Gino Gajano coming into the pits as well. And I think he's about to risk soft tyres, despite uh, Mauricio Quercio. It's, it's hard for us to tell. I think there at the 180 corner where Quercia had his off moment, I think there it might still be very wet because it looked like he was just sliding on that downhill bit, um, not getting any any grip to stop the car. But it looks fairly dry from the outside, to be honest. So if, if there is a dry line, there might very well be an option. Ma uh, Max Heyman in the pits as well. Things with the amount of time there is left in the race, it's about the gamble now if it's going to pay off. Everyone is quite uh, quite spaced out. Is the hope that you can just uh, gain a little bit of time? I mean, I mean the lap times are still 10 seconds slower than the lap times we did in the dry. And we are running out of time for it to, to make any difference. Um, or any big difference. I think many uh, of those front runners will think that they can just run these inters to the end, especially uh, having stopped quite recently. Uh, so here is Lucas Murno. Yeah, and he is on the charge. He very well knows about the 10 seconds that Ruben Mesheda has, and the gap has come down. It's just one second that he needs to find. Half a second, he's already taken off Mesheda. So, one more second, and Lucas Murno, against all odds, will be back on the podium. Bit of a squirm into 15. Um, now, the last lap, Meshida crossed the line, did a 1 minute 24.5. Uh, Murno crossing the line. 
Oh, and I think he's must have had a moment where he breached track limits because we've not we don't get to see the time, so we yeah. can't see the gap. But as you can see, it, it was it, the final chicane. It was quite clearly less than a second now uh, that Murno needs on a good run. Keep an eye on the three drivers on super softs. Uh, but at the minute, no one set the timing sheet alight just yet. I don't think it's going to be prompting any moves up the front. No, I think they were still on the out lap. I see a 150.0 by uh, Gigiano compared to 125 around him. The others on Inters. Uh, no, now just has to lap as quickly and as consistently as he can. Oh, he's lost again now. In the meantime, Knezovic has now reeled in Daniel Benton Reader once again on the road. There's only eight tenths between them. Oh, but Murdo no, once uh, again. Again, yeah, this is what he did the lap prior, and we're pretty sure he did get a track limit violation. There, Knezovic has passed Benton Reed at this moment. Oh, a very interesting part of the track. Oh, actually, it's, that's Adelaide Hairpin. That's not an interesting part of the track. That is exactly the part of the track you'd expect it uh, to happen. Are you but... sure it was Adelaide Hairpin? I think it oh, was it? 180. Oh, no, hang on. Sorry, no. Yeah, I've got completely lost my bearings there. You're right. Has done the move up to 180. Interesting. In the meantime, uh, Henry Buckland has decided to retire the car as well. And here it is, up towards Nurburgring. Through there, Benton Reader wide. Oh, oh, and he's just been ordered to give the place back because oh, Benton Reader ran wide, trying to slide through, but. If he'd have kept it clean to the inside, I think that would have been a fair game. But unfortunately, he kind of drifted wide into him and then kind of chopped his nose off. So, Knezovic has got to do it again. That was seconds from disaster. There at the exit. The thing is, if he'd just been able to hold it tight to the inside, that would have been moved on and he would have capitalised on Benton Reader's mistake. But... Now, Knezovic will have to try it all over again. He's immediately right back behind him through 180. Gagiano making the super soft, well, kind of work. He's <laughs> close to the intermediate lap times, but the track is getting drier and drier, so I think by the next lap or in two laps, he might be quicker than the Inters, but I don't think this is worth... Uh... For the guys at the top. No, I think uh, a lot of them will be thinking by this point they should just be able to hang on to the end. Knezovic now very close again through Daniel Benton Reader. We also keep an eye on that gap between Murno and Mesheda. Still about 10 seconds, although it's just flown up to like. It was close. It was 10.4 when we started that sentence. So by the end of it, it's fluctuated above 11 seconds, back down to 10.4. What is going on with that gap between Murno and Mechida? What is the part of the track they're on? But it's still close. Murno could still do it. In the meantime, Kenezovic, oh, he's locked up. And he's gone into the rear of Benton Reader. Benton Reader hangs on. Oh, and Kenezovic there. Getting a little bit overworked. Henry Buckland, in the meantime, is in the chat. Hey, Henry. Uh, he, ah, he ran out of fuel, so this is the situation that happened. He must have lost something when he disconnected. Uh, shame. So, uh, yeah. Good effort still, running the points at the beginning of this race. Yeah, and good running just to keep out of the way and, you know running ahead of uh, both Cosetex up until running out of field, so uh, not bad at all. Meantime, though, Alexander Knezovic receives a final warning from race control. Uh, that uh, moment locking up into Adelaide Hairpin. 
got three laps to try and make this move. And once again, it's a similar sort of pattern. It seems like Benson Reader's tyres um, are going off more. Obviously, Knezovic did wait a lot longer to stop, so he will have a bit of a tyre deficit in his favour. But I think he has DRS. DRS is active again. With the... oh! oh, again! Very deep, and he is on his final warning. Remember that. Oh. He's ahead of Ben. Benton Reader now, but Benton Reader might not be happy about this move because once again that was. Oh, Benton Reader's just been given a last warning there as well. Maybe he had a bit of a swipe through that. We'll, we'll get a replay in yeah. a moment, but that was um, dear me, I, that looked like more of the same. It looked like Ben uh, Knezovic, sorry, had again overcooked it. Maybe a bit of an overspeed with DRS. And just misjudged his braking point. Yeah, but it might be. I think it was like a, a bad camera angle to see this, but there might have been some moving on the braking by Benton Reader, which of course is also not allowed. We'll see if Benton Reader can can fight back. But if uh, it is, the blame is apportioned on Benton Reader. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think he has tried to block a bit late there. I think he's almost not expecting the move from Knezovic. Uh, Knezovic just kind of glides to up the inside. And it's uh, a last-minute block. So I think Knezovic might have got the move done there. In the meantime, Gabriel Peckley fighting to get in the top 10 against Mark Jordan. Peckley on the outside. He's going to be made to go the long way oh, around. But now they've got Knezovic. black workers. Oh, Peckley gets the move done, but Knezovic is there. Peckley's going to have to let off. Can Jordan get back? Jordan's going to try and get back through now. But, this is oh! Not, um, oh. Uh, two into one do not go there. I can't believe they've been able to get through. They look like it was almost front to rear contact, but uh, they survive and Peckley lets the move come off. And how no one had an incident there, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but they survive. And Peckley up to ninth. Um... Solid drive from him again, if any, you know, any other day where there's a higher attrition rate, and Peckley might have found himself back in the points. Uh, but in the meantime, we rejoin Lucas Murno. The gap has gone up to 11.5 seconds. Oh. And there's a 10-second time penalty for both Peckley and Jordan for continuing their fight, ignoring blue flags. Um, so both of them will get a 10 second time penalty. It doesn't actually affect their position in the minute because of the gap back to Gigiano. Um, and because they both get it, it's not going to affect their placing. In the meantime, uh, how are you feeling, Paul Muller? Victor B and Gonzalez Catillo in the last two points paying positions are together. Um, team orders? Question mark? Or <laughs> is this there going to be a fight uh, as they head through? to start the final lap at the minute. Yanis Volborn is already on that final lap about halfway through. B and Kativo running together. I mean, I don't think they should fight on that final lap, but I mean, it would be fitting to be in Final Void season so far if they now <laughs> take each other out. Let's just hope they don't do that. I don't think they will. In the meantime, we join Yanis Volborn just a few corners to go. Had to fend off the fight. He got nailed the start against Reuven Mesheder. Fended him off through the first stint. And then a masterclass in the rain. He recovers from his DNF in Montreal to win in France. And Yanis Volborn is back with his fifth win of the season. Meantime, Philip Pushka. Excellent recovery from him after his crash in qualifying. Started sixth. But a great drive, and he's up firmly into second place. Great results from him. It's starting to come together and be more consistent race by race, following on from the win in Canada. Now, Meshida crosses the line. Ten seconds back to Lucas Murno. The minute the gap is 11, I think at the pace he's going... Is it going to have been enough? Oh, and Murnau just flies <laughs> straight. He's just like, no, I'm going to try and cut that gap as much as I can. I don't think that was quite enough there across the line. No, no, it isn't. I think 11 point something seconds. He wasn't he wasn't able to get any closer than I think 10.6 was the closest that he was. 
Mavic is also, I think he, he might even be the final car that is still expected to cross the finish line on the lead lap. I think so. I think both the, uh, the Lloyd cars have crossed the line and not changed position there, so they finish 7th and 8th. Alexander Knezovic, well it worked for him. A double top five for the second race in a row for Scuderia Cesario. Yeah, I think the rain came at the wrong time for him. Uh, a few laps earlier and he might have been... Oh, he's straight oh, going he's, into he the He has pit. already finished. Everyone yeah, has indeed is. finished. <laughs> So, uh, Yanis Volborn uh, is your race winner uh, this afternoon. We'll run through the provisional um, provisional classification in just a second. And as ever, we'll try and get the, uh, the top three in. But yes, it's a win for Yanis Volborn. Superb performance from him. Uh, Philip Pushka comes home second. Uh, Ruben Mesheda does hang on for third. As far as we're aware, I don't think... Uh, Lucas Murno had shut the gap enough to benefit from that 10-second time penalty. Knezovic rounding out the top five. Daniel Benton Reader started last and finished sixth. Excellent work for his Infernal Void Racing, who have had a rough start to the season, get a double points finish with the last two points paying positions. Peckley ninth, another solid performance from him, whereas Mark Jordan tried to make the one-stop work, but the rain came and kind of neutralised that, but a top ten for him nonetheless. Dino Gajano, after such a good qualifying, unfortunately, can only uh, have 11th after that first lap incident. Max Heyman getting caught up in that. Machado, 13th. Quercio, 14th. Buckland and Feckler rounding out the order are only two DNFs today. And we are now joined once again by the top three, starting once again with Yanis Volborn. Yanis, congratulations. An excellent drive. It seemed very close, but I think... It almost seemed like moving on to the mediums uh, and then with the rain coming, you felt more comfortable. Is that is that how it felt driving around there today? Um, well, uh, Ruben and me were talking about the medium tyre. Uh, felt uh, not so good. Um, so we decided to go onto the soft tyre and yeah, in the end it started raining and uh, we benefited also from the soft tyre again. It definitely felt like both of you were very close together in that first stint when you were both on the softs. Uh, and then when, you know, the mediums came, it just seemed like you were able to uh, to, to get a little bit more out of that tyre today. Uh, was that the case? I think so, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, wet conditions today. Um, how was it in terms of managing the transition from... Uh, uh, dry to wet uh was it, it seemed like pretty cut and dry when you had to make the call uh to, to switch tires um well it was okay i have to go from the soft to the inter at the stage um but uh, i shouldn't uh been uh, wanted longer out uh out with the soft tire otherwise i would have been shunned maybe um yeah so uh after the second uh, stop for the Inter, I, fi I finally got my right rings, so and uh, I, I uh, was able to uh, extend my gap. And obviously, it stopped uh, raining at the end, uh, track drying up. Was there any consideration of moving back onto the dry, or were the Inter still more than capable at the end of the race? Um, I tried the uh, soft tire in the practice. I think it was in Canada, and. There's a definitely no. Yeah, okay. Um, obviously, you aren't joined by Pascal this week, but we've mentioned before in the past that Pascal does a lot of work on on setups. Uh, did he help you with any setups this week, or were you like purely by yourself having to, to work on the car yourself? Uh, to be honest, we just loaded the Canada setup. All oh, right. Just the rings and the gears, and that was it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, it seems to have worked out uh, very well for you indeed. Uh, a perfect recovery after after last week. Congratulations, Yanis. Very well done. Um, yeah, thanks. Philip, uh, a great recovery drive from you. Obviously, not the ideal start in qualifying. It was a good first lap, uh, but obviously getting a little bit caught on that curb uh, in the, out of the final chicane. Was that a concern in the race at all? Uh, not really, because I just was a little bit like just over the top in qualifying. 
no need at all for that just stupid mistake and in the race there was no really uh, time to go on the limit there because every time you the limit there's like a 50 percent chance you're going to crash so that's not worth it for me um yeah our race was okay a spun in the first stint was which didn't really help at all well i think in the end Giannis was just a little bit faster so he would have won anyway so p2 is in my eyes a good recovery especially with uh the last stint uh, pace was pretty okay in the in the red so yeah i'm uh, pretty satisfied yeah, absolutely. It was a very, very strong performance from you today. Uh, again, in terms of the the difference between tyres, soft and soft to medium, did you feel more comfortable on one or the other, or did we? Did you just feel generally quite settled with the car this afternoon? Yeah, well, the medium was very good for me. The soft didn't work at all, so I didn't really practice the soft at all. So maybe that's it. Maybe I have to practice a little bit more soft. But the last season it was the same for me. Like the soft just doesn't work at all. Um, I don't know why, but I'm not faster with a soft and with a medium so yeah we'll have to work on that but otherwise uh car was pretty okay for yeah as Ariana said for me the same little to no practice so that's what it's gonna be um if you want to be have a great better car you have to practice more so let's uh look for the next round no uh, absolutely fantastic result great drive uh Ruben, congratulations well done on being able to kind of hold out uh on that uh 10 second uh, gap over Lucas to, to keep the podium. Uh, as I said, when, when speaking to Yanis, you know, that it seemed like the gap opened up a lot uh, when you switched onto the mediums. Was that a, was that a big struggle for you this afternoon? Um, yeah, the medium were so, so bad. And I don't know why, because last season, the medium suited me very well. And yeah, today, I mean, I started today with the laps and the setup, so probably not a great combination for the race and the medium, and yeah. You know, and you looked in, in some cases quite uncomfortable in the uh, on the inters as well in the wet weather. As you say, that's more setup related again, because, um, you, you know, we've seen mm -hmm. you drive in the wet before very well, but it looked like you were, you know, having to uh, fight the car in some places. Yeah, first on the first stint, I got my front wing settings completely wrong and had so much oversteer. And it was also my first race today in the rain, so I didn't know anything about the inter. And yeah, and also, which, yeah, I mean, it's just, ah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not great, but I, I will learn from it. All things considered, you can, I think you can still be very happy uh, with the podium. Uh, obviously, there was that penalty with uh, Gonzalez in the pit lane. Was it just a case of you didn't see him as you were you were coming to exit? No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he thought I was the only car in the pit lane. And when I saw he was directly uh, to the side to me, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I, I knew that was a penalty that was completely deserved. And yeah. No, well, you managed to recover from it well. Again, congratulations uh, on the podium. Uh, well done to all three of you. Great drives this afternoon, uh, making it look uh, making it look quite quite tame considering changeable conditions at a brand new track. So, excellent work from all of you. Well done, um, Robin. It's it, if anything, this has probably been our calmest race of the season, which is quite remarkable considering, uh, as said, new track, wet weather, um, but some great drives all around. Um, who would you pick for driver of the day? Uh, to be honest, I think today I would go with Yanis Wilborn because it was such a controlled effort, and uh, he, the the race win from the second stint onwards was never out of doubt. I think, um, but honorable mentions, I think, to Daniel Benton Reader last two sixth is a great effort. Um, but also Philip Pushke, because I think today the result was absolutely maximized considering the qualifying. So, um, yeah, I think th these would be my picks. No, very good picks indeed. Even though, uh, you know, Lucas Myrna will be disappointed from second um, to come home in fourth. I think he did a great job of turning it around after being on the wrong tyre at the start as well. So uh, good work. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a long race. Even if it doesn't go right at the start, he kept his, uh, kept his head in the game and... Uh, has pulled out another good result for uh, for Scuderia Cesario. Good team result for them today. Um, 
But that is us for this afternoon. Thank you once again for joining us. Next time, uh, in just over a month's time, it is the last race before the summer break at Circuit the Spa, Frankershaw. Robin is once again on his own. Sorry, Robin. Um, I can't believe I'm not going to be commentating on a race until September. That's insane. Um, but uh, it's been an incredible start to the season, and we are uh, looking forward to the next round. So thank you so, so much for watching this afternoon, and we will see you very soon. Cheers. Thank you.